Hey, Shayna. Hi, y'all. Well, Lauren, why are you on? My what went wrong that you're on? Yes, my training. <laughs> there were too few people, so we decided to postpone to January. I'm supposed to be running a training tonight, but it was like, let's just let's just call it. <laughs> and I was like, great, I can hop onto my <laughs> new track meet. There's there's nothing like quite like canceling a meeting to chew you up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Except that meeting canceled and she had to go to another meeting. Yeah, <laughs> true. Oh. But that's 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 half the way there, you know. <laughs> One at a time, you know. <laughs> the worst thing I, I remember when I had to go to an all-day faculty meeting. Can you imagine an all-day faculty meeting, right? And and I was so distraught. So I so I said to Nancy, "How am I going to get through an all-day faculty meeting?" And she said, "I'm going to teach you how to knit in five minutes." And <laughs> and it did it. It got me through. And when I got when I got a snag, I passed it down to one of the faculty who I knew was a good knitter, and she'd fix it and pass it back to me. <laughs> and you had a very long right. scarf at the end of it. I had very long. Well, it, it was yeah. <laughs> had a lot of holes in it, but it's, it. <laughs> We've now had two staff retreats on Zoom, and let me—that's like next level. Like, yeah because we had one in March oh. and one in in December and so mm. we've got it. Helen are they that making meeting. you do that at all? Oh yeah. At the university? No we don't have long faculty meetings. <laughs> Just a small like in our uh, departmental meetings that's all very quick. <laughs> at least there's that. Because faculty meetings are like hundreds of people then well, I don't know the but only if but only if you talk and they you know that's the thing is and there is also the inverse proportion rule in faculty meetings that the time spent is inversely proportional to the seriousness of the problem exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing um, so let me just send a couple quick texts, see if folks are joining. And you do have a quorum. Oh, it's just counting, oh, yeah. actually, to, counting to figure out if we do have a quorum. So, okay. I do. Because Julia left us, as I'm sure you all saw and yes. responded mm -hmm. to. You. And then, um, just FYI, Janelle also sent, we've been playing phone tag and, you know, scheduling meetings and having to cancel. And, um, and then um, she has sent me an email this afternoon that I have not had a chance to respond to. Um, but she can't make it tonight and is trying to figure out, she hasn't been able to make a lot of the Thursday night meetings and is trying to figure out how to best participate. So I'm just like, stay, stay. Right. Um, so I would definitely advertise that you have a space available in your um, newsletter. I think that would be great addition to our advertisement. Great call. I'm just gonna write a note to myself on that. Mm. Okay. Um, well, should we kick it off? Yeah. Um, so on our agenda today, in, in my words, in addition to Cameron's, uh, so we've got um, uh, public comment review, uh, uh, agenda review, let's do what we're doing now, public comment, uh, review and approve minutes, uh, committee learnings, we'll do breakout groups, um, city committee meeting report backs. Um, thanks for the clarification, Cameron. <laughs> um, uh, budget updates, report back from the city council meeting, any, anything to note about budget. Um, and then before diving into kind of our, our program, uh, so our 
outreach, um, fundraising updates, uh, creative discourse work plan updates. I've got some report backs from the meeting with creative discourses, um, all kind of in the next 20 minutes or so, um, so that at six o'clock, we can really dive into our COVID conversation potentially with um, the CAN, which I'm not remembering what it stands for now, uh, guest. Middle area neighborhoods. Thank you. Are folks joining us at six for that? Do we know? Okay. So we'll 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 hold on to that. Okay. Um. So, uh, any uh, adjustments to this agenda? Okay. No. Can I get a motion to approve? <laughs> I Jared, move that we. I move that we approve this agenda. And I will second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right. Motion passes. Um, and then do we have the minutes? I do not have them pulled up. Uh, I think I just did. Um... Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I don't know how to attach things to or share a screen or anything like that. If someone can do that. Um, did you send them by email or? I did send them, I think. You did send them. Did, did any, everybody get them? Did you, anybody get them? I don't remember. You can share your screen by hitting the green button at the bottom. Um, hold on. Share screen. Share screen, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I'll I've recall. gotten them. So I did everything except mail them. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? Okay. <laughs> All right. So now I have to go to, um, how, how do I, oh, there we are. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess I wondered what happened to Pam Van Dersen? Was she, was she not interested in? in joining i just i didn't get her email and because i sent these out so late i haven't had a chance to find her email to be able to invite her officially let me know julia real quick Be right back. Uh oh, is someone at the door? Oh, but we need him to scroll. To scroll <laughs> for us. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Zoom meetings. Here we go. Yeah, I couldn't still learn to stop myself. Whenever someone shares their screen, I try to go up and down and nothing happens. Every time. It's like, ah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take this opportunity to get a power cord. Oh. Okay, here I am. We were saying we need you to scroll down. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we're all <laughs> we're all hampered. And actually, do, can you scroll up a little bit? Because um, missed it. There we go.
right, we've got Michael and Jeremy back. Does someone want to make a motion to approve the minutes? I move that we approve the minutes. Michael, do you want a second? No, I wrote them. So someone else. Oh, should you do. wrote them? <laughs> Tell it all second. I second. Awesome. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Awesome. Okay, okay. I'll, try remember, I'll try to remember to send the drafts the next time. Thank okay. you so much for taking the right. notes, Michael. Yeah. You're welcome. Now, how do I un unshare? There you go. You did it. Okay, there it is. All right, just close the document. Um, you're, very, you're very tolerant of this dinosaur. Thank you very much. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Michael, we're all just, right here with you. Yeah. Not, I didn't uh, have to please. do any Zoom meetings before March. Yeah. <laughs> doing. And now I'm going to ask about breakout groups because we um, were in in the effort of wanting to share learnings and and um, you know continue our committee's learning of just wanting to um, break out into groups for about five minutes per meeting to you know one on one um, to share about some you know stuff that you've been diving diving into over the last um, two weeks. It but was I don't really... see the breakout group button, and I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so I don't know if that's something that I have to authorize, but I was looking while you were saying that. I don't see a way for me to do that. There's no breakout groups. Well, and there are some I don't know if we paid for that, if that's a thing we have uh, to pay for. And there are yeah. only six, six of us here, um, and so why do we need a breakout group? Can we talk about this? To have it just be five minutes rather than 20 oh. minutes kind of thing. <laughs> and to, to not necessarily have it be recorded on ORCA. If anyone, well, that's you know, not exactly how public meetings should be going. Yeah. Um, just remember that this is yep. public city business. So um, I could kick it off if you, if you don't mind. I didn't really do any readings, but I did um, discuss with a leadership group, um, sort of a network of women um, throughout the state uh, who are in positions of leadership within um, municipalities and towns. And we were talking to the League of Vermont, like the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, they're hiring a new executive director. And we all got to talk to them about what we were looking for. And one of the biggest um, things that we were able to bring forward is how badly we need as a state somebody who can come into that position who has strong experience in equity and diversity not just i've been to a training and i've you know know what you're talking about but someone who has like proven track record work with that because that's something that's so central to a lot of what vermont government governments are doing right now um, really specified to the leadership there that that's what we want to see in our next executive director is somebody with a track record in that field. So, say will again, anything come of that? I don't say, know. Say again what the field is that you. I'm sorry. Um, I'm so it's scared okay. The, the the Vermont uh, League of Cities and right. Towns is hiring a new executive mm. director. Right. Mm. So they really help. Um, they're sort of our main lobbyists, if you will. Right. Uh, really a lobbyist, but they help support um, initiatives uh, that would support Vermont municipalities. So they are a very important voice right. in our sort of government structure here. So that was, I thought, like a really engaging conversation to have with um, specifically a group of women um, and, and seeing how much they wanted to bring that to the table. Okay. So specifically women's issues or women in leadership roles? It was just a women in uh, leadership roles meeting talking about the next uh, BLCT executive director. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, sorry, I got distracted there. Okay. <laughs> Obviously. Different, different groups. No. Michael, do you want to go? Or? Um, okay, no, I would like, I'd, I'd rather sit and think a little bit more about this. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, P Pellin, you were the one I think who who suggested this. Did you have anything specific in mind when you when you did that? When you had made that suggestion? No, I was talking about the brainstorming. Uh, first, I'm uh, new. I'm not that new, but still new uh, for this committee. So I just want to learn more um, about what uh, we can do, which uh, Shaina, uh, Shaina shared those documents, which were very helpful for me um, to understand a little bit more about the committee. It was just, uh, I just offered like a, having brainstorming session that's all, you know, just learn your thoughts. And uh, my expertise in, on education. So if we come up with anything related to education, I can take the lead, I can help other people, you know, I can be more active. Uh, other than that, I can listen <laughs> other ideas and try to <laughs> find out how uh, I could be helpful. Well, I think you have a lot to offer too. Can I think you yeah. said the, the committee, Shannon, you said the committee had previously been doing this kind of thing. Can you, I wonder if you could talk about a little yeah. bit about how, this, how when went. Julia was, yeah, when Julie was chair and we were in person, um, we were, um, we, we'd kick off each of our meetings with, you know, just sharing, pairing up and, and having folks just do like a pair share of, you know, mm -hmm. something they were reading or participating in or a conversation they had had, just some like a podcast they'd listen to and then just do like report backs of like one or two and of um, just as an opportunity to be able to build community within our organization, you know, within within CJAC, um, and to um, be able to to share some of these these learnings. Yeah, so like for um, for example, the best book that I've read in 2020, um, which I feel like I'm saying something because I feel like I've read a lot of really good books in 2021, 20 lots of time. Um, is this book called like uh, it's called Undrowned and it's um like black feminist lessons from marine mammals it just came out uh, from AK Press and it has just like really been make like working my brain and then there's all these like exercises in the end like for each chapter here's some things that you can do to like decolonize your mind and it's just um a really really powerful read and um I've like been trying to find where I can get copies to share with do you, know, do you know the author's name? I don't. I can look okay. it up real quick. Um, I don't have it here with me. If we're going to talk about books we've read and stuff like that, I will recommend um, Cast. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. I haven't read that one um, yet. Um, what's, what's her name? Elizabeth. Oh, she wrote She wrote The Warmth of Other Suns. Um, but um, what, what she does there is to say, basically to say that racism is a kind of subset of caste system. And so she's really looking broadly and across cultures at castes. I mean, the most obvious ones being India, um, uh, South Africa, um, and, you know, seeing, you know, trying to see that racism is, um, is what she calls the skin, uh, uh, but, but the bones is caste system, is a caste system. Um, and it's, it's worth reading it. it uh, I think it, uh, Wilkerson, Wilkerson is her name. Um, Elizabeth Wilkerson, um, um, and she uses a lot of, uh, as she did in Warmth of Other Sons, um, uh, she uses um, a lot of interviews and some personal experiences as well. Um, so I, I recommend that. I have a copy and I'd be willing to share, you know, to lend it around to anyone who wants to borrow it. Um, and you can, we can just sort of circulate it within the committee if you'd like to do that. Um, so. So uh, I saw a post on front uh, front porch forum about an anti racist book club. Uh, mm -hmm. They are reading books about this topic. Um, have you heard about it, or any of you kind of like a member of it? Because I saw it on front porch forum and I shared it in the newsletter, but I have not. I have not gone. Mm -hmm. I've been part of. Yeah. but be a good place to seek out new members. Great. 
Jeremy Lauren. I don't know if Lauren's had to step away. Um, I feel a little bit in, un, <clears throat> excuse me unprepared. Um, but I, I will just say that I'm I'm doing some anti-racist learning with some other folks through the Unitarian Universalist Association. Um, they have a, a virtual program going now that I've joined, which has been really good. Um, you know, the, it's, it's work that's geared towards white folks kind of going down the path of moving from, you know, maybe politely not racist to decidedly anti-racist. Um, and so it's just for me kind of personally just been a great learning journey um, there's a lot of great resources that we're, um, we have access to through this program. Um, some stuff that people are maybe familiar with that's pretty well known over the past year, like um, uh, Ibram X. Kendi's book, How to Be Anti-Racist. Um, but it, it, there's a lot of content that we've been going through. Some of it's more poetic and kind of arts-based, um, but it's, uh, I, I mean, I could share lots of stuff, I suppose, links, but I'll, I'll just say for now that it's been for me a good learning experience um, and, and certainly kind of syncs up with my motivations and, and desire to be working with this group. So. And hi, welcome, Elizabeth. Thanks for jumping right in. <laughs> we were just um, doing a go around and just sharing any, any learnings, yeah, books, part, like groups, mm -hmm. podcasts, conversations that we've been learning from over the past few weeks. Um, so I'm a member of Thrive, which is a, um, a large network in central Vermont of uh, mostly human resource uh, groups. Uh, and uh, not at this meeting, but at the previous meeting, there was a discussion of uh, values and where we felt uh, we, whether we felt we needed training as uh, the entire group of Thrive, or if there were tools to evaluate uh, where each organization was as far as, um, you know, different criteria, especially um, racism being one of the top, uh, you know, concerns. Um, and uh, so uh, that was interesting. I, I honestly have been so, um, busy with uh, my ride by GMT uh, and getting that launched uh, two weeks from today. <laughs> that I am, I kind of dropped that ball. Uh, however, uh, you know, I, I do uh, want to make you aware of Thrive. Um, Jeremy, if you could, um, you know, put some information, I just came in at the end of your talk. So I'd be interested in whatever links you have. And um, uh, that would be fabulous. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of what other things would be relevant uh, for your group. Um, I think that one of the things I wanted to talk about basically was the outreach to current riders that's happening now uh, with my ride by GMT. Um, two years ago, I, I um, started to draft a um, writer uh, engagement and marketing plan with a special emphasis that whatever innovations happen, that the current writers uh, be given accommodations that would work for them so that everyone can ride. Um, there is, has been um, a bit of um, concern because uh, there is a population, we did an onboard survey the week before Thanksgiving week, and uh, there's concern by current riders, particularly at the Montpelier Housing Authority, that this happened and that before this system was adopted, there weren't public hearings, which I think is a very valid concern. I, we are um, at Sustainable Montpelier Coalition, we have a document in which we're writing up everything that worked, all the mistakes we made, all the successes we've had. And I think that the fact that there weren't public hearings, there were public hearings once the system was adopted, but not before. Uh, and so uh, individuals would have had the opportunity to um, state their case and their concerns. Um, we're making great headway in, I think, uh, creating accommodations 
uh, the community, the phone in the community room at uh, Pioneer is can be used to uh, make a call because there are people who don't have a personal device in order to contact and reserve a ride. Um, I'm now working on getting a phone like you would have at an airport where you could press a two digit code and we're wondering whether the pay phone at the community room at lane shops can be modified. Um, and uh, so that people can just pick up the phone. There is a local number uh, for GMT. Uh, so it turns out that inadvertently we've given out the Burlington number. And today I got a call from uh, uh, a, a gentleman who I've ridden the bus with many times who uh, it does, is um, blind. And uh, he said, now what's the phone number for GMT? I said, oh, no problem, I've got it. And I went in and I found this 223 number and I had to laugh. So we're now promoting the local number. Um, but it's been a bit tell, of a challenge. Can you tell us what that number is? So sure, you bet. I, we're gonna, you're going to see it everywhere. You're going to be able to recite it by the time we're done. By two weeks is over. By the lunch. <laughs> so just a second. I, I currently have a baby picture up of my granddaughter. Um, all right. Let's get to the phone number, Parker. Uh, GMTA, it's 802-223-7287. And you press option one to get to the call center. So there are a couple of different ways that you can um, book your ride. And it turns out that when we did the survey, about a third of the people are sitting on the fence. They don't know what they're thinking about it. Um, a third of the, a little over a third are excited about it. And a little under a third are like, no way, no how. And so I was just writing up a report on, uh, so we sat at um, Pioneer and Lane Shops from 10 to 12, five days a week last week. Uh, we had two teams of two, and um, there's a lot of anxiety already because of COVID, and then there's additional anxiety because so many people need the structure of the time, of the regularly scheduled time to structure their days. And so I finally came up with the innovation that they can, they can still leave lane shops at 16 after the hour, and they can still leave you know, uh, um, Walmart at, at the time that they're used to going. So we're making slow progress in um, being able to make it comfortable for people, but it will take more time. Um, one of the things that we're interested in, if you could pass this word along, we're looking for what we're calling ambassadors to help us uh, in two weeks, uh, you know, for a couple of hours or for a morning or afternoon to be at various locations. Um, I'm going to be at Lane Shops. Laura Brooke is going to be at Pioneer. Um, Tom uh, Hubrickson, our, our um, Vista volunteer, will be up at Walmart, kind of sitting in his car, jumping out to, you know, going to the, um, to the, the uh, shelter. Uh, Hanif Nazarelli will be at the Transit Center, which hopefully will be open from 7 o'clock until 6.30 oh, with lovely. staff from seven o'clock to 11, and then staff from 2.30 to 6.30. The middle time Hanif will be there because he is the CAN coordinator for that area. So he's uh, for you know that downtown area. Um, we do need someone probably at downtown Shaw's who would basically sit in their car and pop out if someone came to the bus shelter or um, uh, up at Sky Shaw's. So at the two Shaw's we need people. And there are a few other places where we could benefit from having someone um, it's a little bit of an odd request because you would be sitting in your car kind of doing other things and just popping out if someone arrived. Uh, so anyway, thank you. If you have any questions, please ask. Um, you know, it's it's been a little daunting to receive the wrath, uh, the COVID kind of suppressed wrath of people, which is all funneling itself into my ride. Um, and we believe that over time, um, things will shift, but it's it, it has probably not been the most inclusive way of going about starting things. And I and part of the issue is that funding from VTrans just came um, about six weeks ago, maybe uh, five weeks ago. So we're really behind the eight ball. So I just wanted to say that inadvertently, we have not been doing the job that I envisioned. I envisioned us starting in August, uh, so. Well, Elizabeth, um, I know that this group was also, so while we have you, um, wanted to know if you could go over a little bit about the work that we all did with Winock Rock and sort of where that ended and maybe where this could, could sure. plug into that. Yeah, yeah. as COVID started, um, the 211, which is the Vermont 
state um, uh, emergency number that people can call to um, understand what resources are available to them was overwhelmed. And so what happened was that an initiative happened to divide the state up into smaller components. So we had Winock Rock, which was Washington, North Orange, Regional, and I love this part, Command Center. Uh, I was like, Command Center. It was so, it was like, whew. And um, so it was an, a, an admirable initiative where um, many volunteers were trained. Uh, and uh, because of COVID, um, you know, the number was forwarded to these people who could work from home, blah, blah, blah. They learned a lot. Uh, sadly, one of the things we discovered is that we're Yankees and that it was very difficult to ask for help. The difference between Wanock Rock and, you know, being able to ask about resources and versus what happened with the outpouring up at the Berlin, um, uh, what do we call it? Um, uh, yes, when you work for the military, but you just do it on the weekends, a reserve. National okay. yeah, the re yeah. When, when okay. they had the food giveaway and it was guys in soldier outfits who they didn't know, uh, you know, who were giving out boxes of food, there was a line of like a thousand cars, right? And because it was anonymous. And so there was something about Winock Rock which is not really anonymous. So it turned out that for all that effort, there were something like 65 calls, basta. I mean, it was, it was very challenging to know that in the end. Um, however, it's there if we need it again, if there's a tremendous uptick, you know, it, it's there as a resource, it can be reactivated. So um, Winock Rock, I think somewhat came out of Thrive um, because there was already a, a group there that knew that we're working together that they managed, managed to pull some personnel. So we had like Ian Hitchcock from the NRC and we had uh, you know people from different organizations who pooled together to make Winock Rock happen. Um, meanwhile, in Montpelier, uh, we had, which started out to be a very active, um, group, which I called the Tuesday Montpelier Coalition Group, and uh, members of the Montpelier City staff were there, uh, Cameron was there, uh, police chief, fire chief sometimes, uh, MSAC, always a representative, often in the end it was uh, the AmeriCorps volunteer, uh, we had Luke Rackers from CVCOA, uh, we had just a, a lot of different, well MMA used to come, Montpelier Mutual Aid, um, it was a, a nice diversity of, um, of people, and um, it was very valuable. A lot of the churches came in the beginning. Um, it was a valuable way for us to share communication and sort things out in the beginning when things were so very messy. Uh, as things return to the new normal, um, a lot of people have dropped off. And I have to say that at the last call, Cameron was waiting and I was in the wrong Zoom room. And finally she sent me a note saying, I'm here. I have to leave now. You know, I've been waiting for 10 minutes. What's going? So I, I failed, um, but we, I do still, and I haven't sent out your note actually. I do still often send out minutes. We're meeting every three weeks. Um, it's there if we need to, um, you know, reactivate it. Uh, and uh, it was really heartwarming. I did write up a resolution thanking all of the people who had been working within those different groups, uh, volunteering so much time within Montpelier. Uh, and uh, that resolution was read, I don't know, sometime. Do you remember? It was maybe in August or something? I or don't something? remember when anything happened this year, but it did happen. Yeah, we know it happened. It when it happened. It's in, in the great, uh, what do you call it, shamanic time of 2020. Uh, so, yeah, so that's, um, does that fill you in? Go ahead. Any we'll questions? pause for a second, but then I'll, I'll, I'll just have a minute. Yeah, so last meeting or two meetings ago, we said as a committee, you know, there is, like we're we're going through this process of hiring these consultants and um, figuring you know what should we as a city prioritize right now, which is very exciting and very necessary, and it's a very slow process. And so, 
we're, which started, you know, a year before COVID hit, right? And so now we're in the biggest crisis of my lifetime, I feel fine saying, and we're not doing a whole lot of kind of external work. And so, the, you know, this question of, is, you know, CJAC uniquely positioned to, so like, what, what can we, what, is there something, is there a need for what we can do in, during this crisis? Um, yeah, and like, what, are there gaps? Are there um, places that need more support or more help? Or I, I don't know if there's other questions um, like that from other folks, but um, I think that's kind of what we wanted to open it up to. I wanna take this report on one more thing too. So Campbell Montpelier, um, when COVID started, picked up the ball for um, capital area neighborhoods, which yeah. was a, an initiative which uh, Mary Hooper had started um, about a dozen years ago. And um, and Laura Brooke has been um, organizing, and now with Tom Hubrickson, our um, AmeriCorps VISTA volunteer, are organizing that um, initiative. Um, there have been as many as 32 people who volunteered during the height of COVID. Um, the concept was to, um, we initially flyered all of Montpelier pretty much. Uh, with a, a note of, with the Winock Rock information, um, right. our information, and um, Montpelier Mutual Aid's information, and um, and so. And sorry, uh, Elizabeth, our is it Mon Sustainable Montpelier Coalition or? Yeah, Sustainable our, Montpelier okay. Coalition like has donated quantum amount of time to this right. effort. Okay. Um, we've gotten no funding for it, except we got, we did get a thousand dollar check for somebody who wanted us to do COVID related activities. So we've used that money to uh, do sandwich boards and a few other things, but basically it's been an unfunded initiative for us. Um, and so what we're trying to do is build communication networks um, so that the city can communicate with residents, so that residents can communicate together, and so that groups of residents in the neighborhoods can communicate with the city. Uh, and so it's been great because uh, Donna Casey Barlow, for instance, from Public Works is now using the um, CAN network. If there's a sewer or water main break, uh, she contacts Laura. Laura immediately gets the yeah. CAN person to send out information, post information around the, you know, around uh, their neighborhood. And uh, that's been very effective. Um, and uh, now, uh, uh, the new police chief, uh, um, uh, Chief Pete, is uh, asking to um, have CAN coordinators consider um, working with the police department to f help the police. Uh, you know, one of my big things, and, and I don't know if this is relevant to your work, Jeremy, um, is that the police walk more get out of their cars and walk more and know everybody. My voice, my argument has always been, I live downtown, I know everybody. You know, I knew Mark. You didn't talk to Mark very often, although occasionally he did say something, you know, but we all knew each other. And so I believe that so many things would be better if we had deeper personal relationships. And, and to that end, members of the police force have actually been asking the um, police commissioner, I mean, the police um, chief to, do more public work to create relationships. And I think that that's only a plus. I understand the, um, you know, the defund the police concept. I think it's, uh, it's something that we need to think about how to do that creatively. In the meantime, we need our police to know everybody. And so that there are fewer um, issues like have happened in the past. So um, it is not something that we're actively um, like, um, we're, we're, what we're doing is we're offering it to CAN coordinators who are interested in participating and developing that kind of relationship for their neighborhood. Uh, so I just wanted to report on that. Um, and I, I want to report on a, a, a huge issue, which is where, what has happened to Montpelier Mutual Aid. At one point, um, Ian Hitchcock organized all of the Washington County Mutual Aid groups. And I have wanted to get that group back together. Uh, I just haven't had the bandwidth to do it. Um, there is a need to um, have that kind of uh, Washington County mutual aid meeting again. And um, Sustainable Montpelier Coalition is considered a mutual aid group, even though we don't use that title or that format. Um, and uh, 
are, Montelier Mutual Aid has kind of fallen by the wayside. It seems to have always been the case that there were a few people who were organizing things. And one of the challenges is without, as you all know as a group, without a paid person to spearhead different actions, if you're relying on a volunteer group, it's very hard to move forward. So there would be a few people like Emily um, Atunun started, she burnt out, then Maggie took over and a few other people were working with her, they were burned out. Maggie's doing a doctoral thesis, we haven't heard from her in ages. So we don't really know what's happening there. And there were 350 volunteers, which is now in an exclusive list, which we've never been able to access. We don't know who they are, and it seems to me a wasted resource. So there are a couple of nuts to be cracked there. Um, and I'm going to have to really think about where the gaps are. I'm, I'm an introverted thinking kind of person, so I need to have time to meditate on that. But I'd be happy to send that information to whoever you would like me to send it to to share with your group once I've pondered. That would be great. Um, and I'll say thank you, Cameron, like having staff is like so great. Um, and I, I mean, I, my understanding with the Montpelier Mutual Aid too is that there was, you know, that initial bump and then there wasn't a huge call for, it sounds like similar as Winrock, like there, there wasn't the demand that we were anticipating. And so things just kind of petered out because there wasn't that like, I don't know, like satisfied, you know, like there is kind of put into gift cards and given, you know, grocery gift cards to, to families through the schools or something, but it wasn't about like that building relationships that um, kind of was the story that was being told other places. And so I didn't know if that, it sounds like that hasn't really changed yet. I'm, I, you know, we're, we're, you know, in the long dark winter right now, I feel like if we're going to see an uptick in need, it's going to, it's going to be now. Um, and yeah, so I didn't know, have you been seeing any of that or um, haven't I'm also seeing... hearing that you want to sit and think about it too. So yeah, well, we haven't <laughs> been, I, it, because, well, first of all, I, I almost think the MMA site is not working. Uh, oh, they, did, okay. they did do uh, GoFundMe, I think, and raise quite a bit of money for $100 gift cards, but there wasn't, um, you know, there was, uh, well, also, Laura and I met with Maggie every Monday morning for months, uh, you know, sharing information um, and basically offering the CAN network to uh, MMA. And, uh, and so the concept was that, um, that because CAN knew their neighborhood, um, that we would ask that MMA, when they were pairing a uh, person in need, with a person who would help them would do it within the same neighborhood so that a relationship could be built. So we were really promoting that heavily. Um, and, uh, you know, the, again, we're Yankees and just as we're not Brock, you know, I don't know what the numbers were in the end, but the numbers of people who, like I went around before the stay in place order, the night before the stay in place order. And I went to all the MHA, uh, you know, locations, and I put flyers under everyone's door illegally. <laughs> and, but I got some responses, and I, I built some relationships, uh, particularly at Prospect Street, where there are a lot of elderly people. And, um, and, and some people called me up, and I put them together with MMA. But it is really um, about building relationships. And when we had a, um, a meeting uh, of the kind of Winock Rock group uh, at the end, we talked about building relationships and we also talked about changing the narrative. And part of the problem with the current narrative of COVID is that it is so elusive. It is not physical, like Irene was, like your house flooded, you needed help. And it was legitimate to ask for help. COVID's happening, it's, it's, it's kind of unseen. And so how do you justify doing this? I met a woman that day I was passing out the flyers who was coming home from the co-op with a basket. She said, I have just bought like the most reasonable food I can. And you know, there are 10 more days before the end of the month, I have no more money for food. And I said, well, you can, I, no, I can't ask for help. 
So there, we have to kind of get underneath that rock of the idea of help. And I said, but, but, you know, people are big businesses being given millions of dollars by the administration. You know, if for you to get something from COVID relief funds is no different than anybody else getting, you know, that, that this is not help. This is, this is part of the equation of living in a, in a disaster. And, and that concept and that narrative of being, you know, that, that it's not help, that you're not breaking your pride, how we change that now still is a challenge. I have to say that Jamie Bedard, I don't know if you're in touch with her at Just Basics, um, God bless her, you know, they're passing out. I, I promoted to Econo Lodge, uh, to a lot of different places. I cross promoted um, my ride with their uh, holiday uh, gift, you know, their holiday food box. And they're just getting a lot of people now. And uh, so there's a need. It's just hard for people to go. I think it's easier now that, that people aren't going down into the basement, that they're just kind of going and being given a box. Um, it's much easier than it was when they had to go down and sign in. And it was very personal. And there was a lot of shame around that. Anyway, I think if we can get past shame, if we can create a new narrative, and, and, and strengthen that if we can help build the relationships we need to build now, uh, you know, if people can, you know, but we can't build the relationships because we're all shut away. Anyway, enough said. I admire what you guys are doing. I always have, if I had bandwidth, I would be with you in a flash. That's so sweet, thank you. Well, and I want to, I feel like I've just done a ton of talking. <laughs> so if anyone else has any like questions or reflections or things that this is bringing up. Um, um, you well, muted, Michael. Thank, Oops. Jeremy and then Michael. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Um, thanks, Elizabeth, for speaking. Um, I, we actually did meet in those early days of the pandemic, I really wanted to be a CAN volunteer and I really tried, but I just, I totally dropped it. So I did not, I wasn't able to follow through. Um, so I really, I'm familiar with your work and really appreciate what you all have been doing. I'm really interested in this last um, kind of discussion around the perception of assistance and public aid, mutual aid. Um, I don't know if there's anything there for us. Um, so maybe that's something you might think more on could a committee like ours Is he frozen? Yeah, Jeremy, you froze for me too. What it means, um, to, to, okay. Oh, you're but, back. Uh, okay, um, I was saying, I'm really interested in this discussion around the perceptions of aid and assistance. And Elizabeth, I'm wondering if that's something mm -hmm. you might think a little bit more specifically on. Um, I wonder if there's a role for us somewhere, somewhere where they're in the equation um, within the community about kind of changing that narrative around what it means to both receive um, or even ask for um, some kind of public assistance or mutual mm -hmm. aid. So that's interesting to me. It would be nice to not use the words public assistance. I think it would be great to curate language, you mm -hmm. know, and I think you could help with that uh, as a committee to curate language which is equitable and uh, and is can allow people to maintain their pride and their sense of self-esteem. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, 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 I'm I'm part of, you know, Central Vermont DSA. I'm, I'm off doing a, a book reading group. And, you know, what is a worker? A worker is a person who doesn't have control over how their resources come to them. And so we are all workers, you know, every home caregiver is, a, everyone's a worker, you know, and, 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 and I think that we, we have a hard time uh, equalizing everybody in that um, arena. And, um, and particularly because we have such a sharp divide in Montpelier between having many people who have and um, then a percentage of people who don't have. And, um, you know, I, how, I think one of the, uh, obviously one of the goals of your committee is to get rid of the stigma, uh, you know, and um, so I leave you that as a challenge. I'm glad you raised it, Jeremy. But I think curating the language would be helpful. Michael. 
I remember when the first can effort started and it, it, it had a brief but very intense life. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think the two things that made it successful were first, they were, you know, um, things like they were get togethers like mm -hmm. locks and stuff like that okay we're that's off the table now and yeah. we don't have a really sorry, good substance michael set. when was the first round oh, first it's, a long it's a long time it's gwen hall smith was actually the one who put that together so it's um well, and mary yeah. well yeah they, they, mary worked, they worked together but it was gwen who was interested and that's my second point but um so we're talking about you know 10 10 or 15 10 or 12 12, 12 years ago yeah oh, okay, okay. Yeah. so there, there were a series of also the neighborhoods were very interesting because some of them they were very mixed na mixed up neighborhoods and that was good people got out of their boxes of uh, th this neighborhood this college hill neighborhood went all the way down the hill into um some streets that i had never even known were there uh down and down and closer to downtown and it was it was a very interesting way of integrating the city by redrawing the the mental maps that people have and I don't know what, what what thinking went on when you were drawing the maps for the neighborhoods here, but uh, I, we didn't I think... draw them; they so... they drew themselves. Okay, well, it did help, I think, to have gotten some guidance to just sort of mix up the you know get, mix things up a little bit, so people did get out of their their accustomed neighbors and try to meet and meet some other people. So that's one thing. The second thing that made it work for a while, anyway was um that the major it had a, it had a, 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 a major issue which was the new zoning regs and what what gwen was interested in was getting people to respond to proposals and and make comments about uh, how the how did the zoning regulations and planning ought to ought to go um uh, so and i and i don't know how you then how you formulate uh a statement about what the issue is. Um, what I hear you saying is, you know, neighborhood assist, you know, mutual assistance uh, as as the issue. But I think trying to formulate that and make that and articulate that that reason for for action, that reason for communicating, would be really helpful. Thank you, Michael. I, I hear what you're saying. I, I want to say that my perception is very different from yours. Um, my perception was that it was originally organized as a response to the rapid increase in fuel prices um, that happened because of an economic downturn and the fact that um, it was causing people to have to spend a disproportionate amount of their income on fuel. So the concept was that you uh, kind of understood your neighborhood and understood if there were people who had specific needs and tried to um, make sure that they knew what resources were available. It may have morphed into what you're talking about, Michael, uh, over time, but that was not the original founding idea. Uh, so I'm glad to hear this piece of history because I've not heard that before. Um, am I allowed to share screen, um, Cameron? Okay, I'm gonna just share screen. Um, this is on our site. This is the um, CAN page. So that's the original CAN logo. And I just wanted to show you what the CAN map looks like. Rather than going with the uh, 12 groups that were originally um, the town was carved up into, um, this is the current listing of the CAN neighborhoods. Uh, and so there are, um, I think about 40 of them here. And so you'll see that some of them are open and uh, others are not. Uh, and this is uh, Laura Brooks' uh, map. So I just thought I'd let you know that that exists. And um, this is what we found is that most people identify within this group, these groupings as their neighborhoods. So um, as a tool going forward, it's good to know that that's available and that we're open for any way in which we can um, help you get out your, your word. We do a monthly newsletter um, we have started to um, create, we did some prototypes of um, sandwich boards, which we're calling neighborhood information kiosks, mm -hmm. which we found- I've uh, seen them around, they're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I found out about the parking before I got it, the thing in the mail. It's yeah. great, except in front of city hall where there's a wind tunnel and it just went, 
So yeah. um, Tino <laughs> O'Brien, who was our former chair, has is a tool shop, you know, wood shop, and so he's going to take on making some more stable nicks with perhaps some wooden arms and and weighted bottoms and whatever to make them work. Um, but you know, the, we're pulling them in for a little while just because we don't have the bandwidth to to um, work with them for a couple of months, but. They'll be out um, in the beginning of the spring. And, and so what we're trying to do is go analog on this and encourage community to use the, those sandwich boards to promote things within their little grouping to kind of create that relationship through that central point. Um, so if you want anything sent out through the through our newsletter, we send out uh, many of Cameron's COVID updates um, and uh, you know other food shelf ideas and whatnot so uh public works information so just know that we're there thank you michael i really appreciate your um giving me your bit of history there i could see that that would have been uh, a kind of a a good issue to rally yeah, they around. weren't they weren't mutually exclusive and i can't and it may i mean the the idea of people being alert to other people's needs was certainly part of the discussion and, and what, what was going on. But I just remember them in the context of trying to do the new master plan. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other questions? I have an unrelated question. If I would like to double check some information on our website, uh, the Lake Montpelier website about CAN, isn't that the Laura? Would that be the most efficient thing? Yes. Okay. I think we have this like very old list on our website of I think who are like who the representatives are. And I think it's mm -hmm. really wrong. So I want to. Yeah, we're 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 um, having a capacity issue in that, um, you know, where it is an unfunded initiative and we have yeah. put I mean, I, I got shingles. Let's face it, you know, at the, the beginning. <laughs> At the beginning of COVID, okay. we were working yeah. nonstop, and I just went and got shingles. I mean, how dumb to to overwork myself so much, uh, you know. And we're we're having another one of those little uh, time crises now because uh, right. it's going to take some time to get this new service launched and have everybody on it. So, anyway, thank you everybody for listening to me blather for a long period of time. It's now six twenty nine. I've been on Zoom since. Um, three o'clock and I am going to get on a seven o'clock call till 8 30. So I'm going to go make myself a toasted cheese sandwich. Step Unless away any, from the computer for anybody 29 some, minutes. Yeah, exactly. I want to wish you all happy holiday, however you celebrate it um, and stay safe, uh, you know, stay happy. And I, I, again, from the bottom of my heart, I love what you all are doing and you, you're always with me in my heart, even though you don't see me here on the screen. So if you ever have me, call me back. You know I can blather and share. <laughs> so I well, anyway, thank you. And I, I will yeah, and marinate on like how I will. Like, yeah, knowing yeah that we're here and how we may be able to help. And then we'll yeah, send you stuff to put in the newsletter for even advertising for our open committee positions and yeah. um some other things, some other things there. So. And when the Knicks come back, you're welcome to post post away. So awesome. Thank you. And, and I, I do think that how we curate the language, what Jeremy brought up is hugely important. So I think you all need to marinate on that. Too. Yeah, I want to like look into polling and stuff too. I'm, Cause I'm sure we're not the only place dealing with this. And I hope, yeah, it'd be so interesting to yeah, figure out. What the yeah, solution I, I want to see that um, Deb Sachs just did a, a survey down in Barrie. I have yet to read what the survey questions were, but um, we're thinking about uh, we have been thinking about doing a Montpelier survey and truthfully, um, as Cameron knows, we would have, if funding were available this past year, we would have done a townwide um, survey that happens every 10 years. And uh, Groberg and Laura um, Gephardt, when she was here, uh, and I sat down and looked at the 10 year ago uh, survey of the community. It's like a community survey. Uh, so I'm thinking that potentially um, uh, Deb Sachs survey and Barry might be a good substitute that we might um, bootstrap and do ourselves. So I, I will let you guys know more about that when I finally have the time to actually read it and uh, understand. It was uh, it could have some very important.
questions from your committee uh, that I think would be very helpful in assessing where we are. So I'm not going to think any more thoughts. I'm going to make a toasted cheese sandwich. Thank you. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I've appreciated your time. Thank you for listening. I'll, I'll send you an email with some stuff about the survey. Um, yeah, my email will, is. We'll, we'll do a couple of more things, and I'll. I'll send I'm right just going to put my email in the chat. E Parker at sustainablemontpelier.org. There you go. Thank you. Awesome. Bye. Thanks, Elizabeth. Yeah. Thank you. Whew. I know that was a lot. So, um, come on, computer. My Chrome keeps crashing and that's what everything is on. Thankfully it's not Zoom. So, <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know, I feel like it's Helen, I'm like looking at you, but also everyone else is like, is, is this bringing up any new ideas or thoughts or yeah, anything else? Reactions? Well, I thought it was interesting that they're thinking about a survey because of course that's part of what um, the end of part one for or the or second part of part one is and um, just figuring out where where the questions that we we are focused on will fit into their questions and and uh, and and we have the money in theory anyway to be circulating the survey so maybe we can offer to have their survey you know, try, try to invite their survey into our into the one that we've got planned and, and funding for. Um, if that if the funding is the major issue that they're confronting, it seems to me we can help with that. Right. It didn't seem like that was the major issue, though, right? No, I, I think to me, it seems like it would just be a very wildly different community. Uh, I think it's but I, well, I don't know. Do we want to survey our community twice about related questions? Right. Yeah. Well, I think we could definitely talk to her more about that opportunity the closer it comes to doing our community survey. Mm -hmm. What can you remind me what the time frame was for, for when we might do a survey? Everything's kind of getting pushed back. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so the, 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 I thought it was the, I thought it was going to be after they had done the last I remember the last conversation I remember about this they decided that they would do it before they did all ten of the focus groups that they, after doing three or four so if they're starting if they're planning to start in January probably the end of February is when they might be uh, ready to start sending putting together the survey so that would be. You know the survey out in March is is my guess, which is a little distracting because it's also town meeting time, um, and I think they have to be, you know, we have to be careful about not getting the survey lost in town meeting stuff. But um, well, we can always have them at tables for people if they come in to vote. We could put there. We always have. Um, I can't think of the word for posters for things that people would want to look at. Uh -huh. That's the best I got tonight. Posters. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Displays? I don't know. Well, network, right next to the Girl Scout cookie table would be good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they didn't come last time. I don't know if they're going to come this time. Oh, that's true. It depends. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm still trying to set, pull up my notes from. Um, Creative discourses. Ooh, sorry. Um, I can go over the any budget updates. Um, I really why don't we do the budget updates yeah. and like city committee report backs and fundraising updates? <laughs> I can gotta give my creative discourses download. I really apologize. I don't have any budget updates other than uh, city council did um, vote to put back. The homelessness task force, the community fund, and the housing trust fund. Not to the degrees that they've been funded before, uh, excepting the um, community trust fund, but um, or the, just the community fund, sorry, mixing up all my funds. Um, but so that was really great. And I really, you know, as a staff perspective, appreciated y'all's 
presentation at that meeting. That was really nice. Um, Lauren, I'm sort of looking at you to see if we have any other updates, but I think that was a really great um, outcome for that for that meeting. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I would just add, I, I found like council overall to be just it seemed more like really trying to figure out how to how to use the tool and like I mean just coming and presenting and the um, having the example like worked through I think made it a lot more tangible for people so I think and I think like that conversation framing up for yeah. when we were getting into actual budget decisions I do think it, it was like really getting wheels turning in a way and framing things differently than how the conversation might have otherwise you know I, I could see us have adding those things back in, but it also, I think just is like bigger thinking about how we're approaching the budget and how we could be thinking about it. So I, I thought it was really very well done and really valuable um, contribution to the, to the process. And, you know, obviously a lot to build on and like, how do we build that from like the base on up is obviously an important conversation too. So it's not just like the working around the edges at the end, but really incorporating it from the beginning. Um, but the, I don't know, that was my perspective and it'll be interesting to see in the next iterations what that gets built on. Well, well, thanks for that feedback. Yeah, I was there too, listening and watching and I think you did a very good job, Jeremy and Shana, um, especially going through the example, I think was very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it did it did uh, make it easier for the council to make uh, you know decisions. You know, it, it was clear that it was helpful that that Bill had sort of set up that you know and really su by supporting those. But I think um, giving the council some framework in which to make that decision was really what made the difference. It was not just it didn't look like oh we're responding right away from the heart. There was there was there was another level of of consideration that went into that. And that was really very good. Because mm -hmm. we're gonna get a lot of things like that now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, that was all Jeremy. Thank you, Jeremy and Julia. Yeah, it was great to, to contribute in that way. Lauren and Cameron, I'm wondering, you know, there's some, some stuff coming up next with the budget. What are your what are your expectations about what happens? Because I think there's a there's a public meeting or a workshop city. Again, what are you expecting might happen in those events? Well, we haven't heard of anybody. I'm just speaking for myself. I haven't heard of anyone coming to petition. So um, that may have, I mean, that might, someone might come to the board and ask to be put on the ballot. That might happen. Um, that can always happen. Good year, bad year, whenever. Um, I haven't heard of anyone requesting time on the agenda for that. Uh, they might come just because it's a public hearing. So um, I, I don't know. Uh, that's the most exciting thing about public hearings to me, <laughs> that they're an unknown thing. And I'm to see uh, feedback on the budget. I will say that we have been doing um, our uh, public budget um, priority survey for the first time in a while. We really kicking this off as something we want to integrate into our budget process. Our new um, uh, finance director is very, uh, I think, more attuned to getting public feedback in different ways. And we've had way more responses than I thought we would so mm -hmm. far this in the hundreds at this point, which for us is pretty good, um, to be honest. Uh, we will never have a significant, a, a statistically significant survey with our population size, like ever. So <laughs> I'm just grateful that people are responding to this. So we'll, we'll have some really good information out of that. And when we get that report, I'll send that to you. Because we we'll stop it after the, right before the second public hearing, we want leave it open for the public hearing time and then we'll be getting back a report back on on what those priorities i will say that looking at the quote uh the beginning uh information we're getting out of that a lot of people's priorities are with public works mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. little teaser there 
What's the name of the survey again? For I will share it with you right now. Do you say a lot of people's what is with public works? Um, so they're like, we've asked people to rank their priorities um, and most- so they want to increase funding in public. Okay, yep. Mm -hmm. I have a link with you right now. I put the survey in the chat because I had it oh. on my computer. Like it was Amazing, like, thank you so much. <laughs> already open. So how was this? Like, how was this survey? Keeps crashing is because I have fifty tabs open. I'm sorry. How was the survey distributed? We're using SurveyMonkey right now. What we what our goals are for next year, and and so I think this is um, an exciting conversation that we could have is making this a more inclusive thing. Like, how do we reach people who don't mm -hmm. use the internet? Right. Right. Um, COVID really ruined a lot of our plans, which was to have public forums, not not council public hearings, but public forums. Mm -hmm. um, the finance director and I were working very closely on creating those where we could walk through that, what the budget means, what we do as staff, um, and then hand out these as like, you know, pieces of paper. Um, I really liked what um, a sustainable Montpelier did with the, um, my ride program where they had a survey but people could just call a number and take the questions mm. via the phone so these are things that um we know already that we need to improve on um so that is definitely in our work uh workload to, to really do a better job at distributing this because i'm just going to acknowledge right now we didn't that's not the most inclusive or far-reaching way so um we are aware of that. Um, I just tried this address, and the, the, what comes up is just an introduction to SurveyMonkey, not to the survey itself. Um, oh, that's weird. Just worked for me. Yeah, it worked for me too. Oh, okay. All right. I see why. Because um, because I'd already I already had taken the survey, and so I'm not allowed yeah. to get into it twice. <laughs> okay, but. Um, I'll write it down and we can put it in the minutes if you want to. Um, yeah, we're going to send it out with the, um, with, in the newsletter too. In the newsletter, um, right. Fingers, you know, I think that's our, our main way right now of getting it out. Um, just, you know, yeah, 50 people in comparison to the, um, however many with can, but just start. Um, yeah, I, d I mean, I do feel like not to go down down a rabbit hole here, but just thinking of like our the charge of this group and the budget and trying to I mean like the the mental gymnastics of trying to plan when you're like okay what money might come from the federal government and like probably that would be like DPW ish money and so should we be funding other things, hoping mm -hmm. that infrastructure money comes through if it doesn't how does that like set us back as a community and create other like ripple effects for decades in our capital you know it's like try it's like you, there's so much guesswork around the budget and I mean I think the city staff has worked really hard trying to think through scenarios and stuff but it's yeah I feel you know you're like making decisions I feel like with like blindfolds on of yeah um just trying to use your your best judgment and so thinking about like you know what core services and like who's affected by what and yes it's you have a list and a memo coming for you lauren um about like uh what's going to be affected staff wise staff capacity for this um and also uh what projects are nothing nothing we put off as shovel ready but what could it what is closest to that so people will be prioritizing that for you guys before one of your January meetings. If, if I may, I was at that meeting for two, for two committees, ours and the, the Montpelier Community Fund. Um, and before we came on, um, uh, uh, Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice uh, made an appeal for getting directly on the budget. And here, I think the city council made a, made a mistake, if I may. Um, allowing them not just to come on the budget but actually waiving the requirement for petition for the petition 
Um, and the reason I think it's a mistake is because all there are a lot of organizations that are in this in this in a similar position to home health and hospice, and they may do exactly the same thing: come to the council and say, you know, we're we're providing this critical service. We would like to be on the budget, and not having to go through the process that the council itself set up, especially um, for uh, uh, petitions that had money in, attached to them. It's twice the number of, of required signatures from petitions that don't have money attached to them. And I think the council is going to, you know, I, I don't know if it will happen, and I hope it doesn't happen. But there is the danger that uh, you'll get start to get flooded with people asking to be put on the ballot um, without having to go through the process. Yeah, I mean, my understanding was they have done, they've been on the ballot before, they've they've collected signatures, and like so, we are trying to draw a line around if you've met certain criteria of like okay. having proven that you could get community signatures and all that, and so somebody would have to meet that bar, which. I don't think, I, I don't think, think it, I think almost like my understanding was no, no other entity meets that requirement currently. The library, the library. Yeah, and they'll get put on too, like yeah. the same way that it gets waived. So that's the, the only other one that I can think of. But yeah, I mean, I, that conversation, I, there could be, you know, certainly there are many other groups doing like very laudable critical work right now, but I think it will be, a, I mean, it's hard that, yeah, it's tricky because you're like, do you make home health and hospice spend their time collecting hundreds of signatures and during COVID time? Right, right. Yeah. But yeah, well, yeah, I we'll see. Yeah. Your time, could we move on to talking about our <laughs> our um our our big priority of the of working with creative discourses? Not that this is not important, but it's, it's sorry, okay keep taking on. us down rabbit holes. It's, not, mm -hmm. I mean, it's very important. Um, okay, I first of all, we're batting three for three. I don't know what that's called in baseball terms for grants. We got um, our third <laughs> grant, the Spark Grant. I've never played baseball. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> um, so yay! Like we're we're doing great. We there's a bunch of other grants due in January. I'm just planning on spending some time around the holidays to crank out. If anyone wants to help and support, please. You know, wink, wink, let me know. Um, but huge applause to Pellin for helping get this one in. So nice which, one, which one is that? Um, the Spark Grant. So it's the Vermont Community Foundation. Okay, so we have Ben and Jerry's Vermont Community Foundation. What's the third one then? There was a third one. Oh, this is very embarrassing. I hope no one watches the Sun, the Orca Media, and doesn't feel appreciated. I will let you know, and we can put that in the minutes, Michael. Yes, okay, good. <sighs> um, I, um, I, just, I, I just heard on, on public radio about the Joyce Foundation, um, which is interested in social equity. So I will look into that one. Um, I haven't done anything I, uh, since then. I've been involved mostly with the community fund, which we had, to, we had 30, yeah. 38 applications to review um, and so that really took up all my time. So I apologize for that. Uh, so Shayna, thank you for your uh, help and educating me about uh, writing a grant because it was first time for me. Since it seems that I kind of learned I can help you more <laughs> with Great. a like more comfortable and confident way. So just let me know if you wanna write other uh, grant proposals, I am here. Don't say that too loudly. <laughs> Great. And thank you again. Yeah. Um, okay. And so then I have a lot of updates from my meeting with Keisha last week. So again, so as you guys saw, Julia um, stepped down right before the meeting. And so I did do it myself. But if anyone does want to join me for these meetings, I would absolutely love to have that time. We don't have our next time set on the calendar right now, um, just because you know with the holidays that we are planning on trying to meet monthly so like every other meeting this one just the timing happens that we had like two over three meetings before before we had our next one um so uh, uh so so first of all um they just wanted to kind of give an update on their thinking around the working groups. so
so kind of because they're just wanting to check in on like the pulse of like the Montpelier equity work that's happening writ large. So this is a quick reminder, Creative Discourses is also working on some of the, with the schools on like the SRO and some other stuff. And so they're going to kind of be doing their own meetings there. And um, uh, that's going through its own process. Um, but that because that board, they're kind of moving in different timelines, right? Because that board formed a committee, they thought it doesn't really make sense to run public forums if the committee is getting off the ground, right? Like want to have the leadership coming from this committee um, and like going through that process. Um, and so the, the next time that they're meeting with that group is January 12th from five to seven. And they're just been so impressed with this committee thinking that they're doing like a really great work of gathering feedback around kind of these two key questions of like, what's our vision for school safety? And, um, and uh, second question, can I forget, I didn't write it down, but it's like what that's basically around as well. And so um, the board like has been moving on to these things. So um, they don't want to ask the committee to make a recommendation that's already happened or wanting to have a you know sense of urgency that's going to trip the process up. And so instead, um, we'll still probably wait until after January 12th to have the first CJAC meeting um, because that's the timeline that we're working on now anyway, um, but that we don't need to kind of coordinate our, our meetings with that group. Does that all make sense? I'm sorry, I'm trying to do this very quickly. Okay. So then for that first group around, if we want to have it be uh, like BIPOC and LGBTQ plus like community, uh, city staff and city committee representatives, um, they said like first, just starting with the BIPOC community representative, uh, represent like staff and, and committee um, folks. And they're like, if it's, and then when I asked them about the minimum number of people per group, and they're like, it totally depends on the situation like if there's only three people and we get like two of the three people to come like that's amazing but like if we're having a group with like low income auxiliary rights and two people come like that's not probably representative so it's not going to be great yeah so so they do want to start with staff okay so i've so got just bipoc staff okay. and city staff yeah, and city okay. committee members yeah so i have um, so we really didn't want it to only be leadership team. Mm. So I've sort of randomly selected folks because I, I mean, I did, I literally put all our names in a pool and I picked some because I think that just leadership, you're going to get a wildly different answer. And they've been through some equity training. And so I, I think that I just think it would be best for city staff to just be kind of and I included most of our um, folks who handle money because I know that they wanted that to be, uh, you know, like folks who handle money and payroll and hiring. Uh, but we all kind of touch hiring. The thing is, we're such a small group that everyone kind of does everything, to be honest with you. So um, uh, I still haven't reached out to our uh, employees of color because I was waiting on language from Julia. Just gonna just send it out there. I have a draft. I'm just going to do it. So if they're Great. expensive, I'm, I, 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 I'm sorry. I'll take that from my staff. I'm going to, it's, you know, is what it is. And did they want to talk to people who identify as LGBTQ? I plus. So um, they said, if they're just trying to do it to get a broader number of folks, like absolutely not like, wanting to keep it as a, a BIPOC community first and foremost, like race okay. first kind of conversation. But then they asked me a whole bunch of questions. I was like, I don't know. I don't work for the staff. So <laughs> I was like, why, why do, why does the city want an LGBTQ plus conversation? You know, like if that's something that is feeling like uh, unequitable or underrepresented, you know, like those are more like, is there a reason why we want to have this conversation? So hold off on that bucket and then might be able to add it in. They're hoping to like be able to have a little bit of flexibility if things like this come up. Wonderful. So. Thank you. That helps. Yeah. Um, and so then I think um, Michael and Lauren, I think that should answer some of your questions about the policing stakeholder conversations, but that, that they also um, 
uh, Keisha can come to um, the meeting, Michael, that you, okay. and so, and basically for all of these things too, Keisha was just like, if, so four names of, I'll get into, um, I'm sorry, I just have three minutes left. I'm like, wow, what how kind of quickly can I go? And instead I'm doing a terrible job. Um, but that if there are, if you want to like get in touch, just feel free to email directly and to, to get directly in touch. Um, okay. so for, for Michael in particular, like that, that, that could be helpful for the police review committee. Um, so coming on January 11th for that. Um, but there was one other really important thing around, um, like security of participants, confidentiality. Okay. Um, so they want it to be technologically confidential. So that, you know, means like having it be on a Zoom account that's not being publicized in Orca, for example, right? Or like their Zoom link is only being shared with people who have been invited to participate in these, you know, conversations. Um, that's okay, because it's, it's not a public meeting. It's not considered a public meeting. It's not considered a public meeting, yeah. And so if when they, for a lot of these identities are already like highly visible and creative discourse won't share personal stories unless they get permission, even if it's de-identified. So even if it's without like people's names attached to it, um, they'll be sharing that out. And so, and that creative discourse will be the holder of all of that information. Like they're kind of taking that response, that security responsibility. Um, and so this, this is a very real concern because I guess in Essex, people were putting in public records requests to find out who was participating in these meetings. Um, and so creative discourse is like real, like by being kind of that separate party, they're able to really make sure that people's identities are being protected when they're talking about really value, you know, really personal and, and vulnerable stuff. And so they're wow. also distributing the stipends um, in Essex, you know, creative discourse has kind of gotten the funding from Essex to be able to distribute the stipends directly to folks that's not going directly from the city to participants. Um, well, that's also important that y'all are raising that money and that's grant money for that purpose. And it's not, I think- City that, money, right. Yeah, I, I yeah. think that really negates some of that- Concern. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. And so, yeah, so we'll be patting, sharing more like the patterns and the general findings um, not these personal stories unless they get explicit permission and they can't look at these specific stories are really valuable to the conversation, to the recommendations that are being made. That's um, great. They were concerned about security around for if there's, you know, more than three people of city staff who would want to. And so I said, talk to Cameron about that. We'll be able to... Okay, so great. so we my my understanding of this is that city staff would only participate in the meetings that they wanted to talk directly to city staff, right? They're not they're not. They yeah. I mean, they don't count as members of our general public. They're staff, so even if they live in town, they're not going to participate in those meetings. And I won't be there. This is great, you know great. like it's not that's not my job to be there. It's my job to hear what. The folks that we entrusted and hired and are the subject matter experts to give us reports on you know yeah so i feel that no no pushback on that at all cool okay so i think those were all of my things this i just like boop, 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 but just i did have a question yeah Gina, um because i i sent an email um but they had asked for a letter from us of commitment yes. and did you bring that up to her my I did, and I got some draft language that I just haven't Perfect. been able to actually read over and then get back to you, Cameron. Okay, so thank you. That's, yep, it's it's sitting with me right now. No worries, Perfect. no worries. <laughs> Any other questions on next steps? So again, you know, the timing is, we're just kind of, going with the flow, COVID, um, number of people, like probably three would be a good minimum, but it is what it is. Um, and then probably no more than 15 on, you know, a Zoom call. Um, so if we do have, you know, a lot of people coming to some, we can do breakouts or something like that or different timing. Um, yeah, but any other questions on, on moving forward here? It's like, oh my gosh, it's January. We're gonna be doing these very soon. Yeah, Lauren, 
Yeah, just just one question. I think um, you know, talking directly with CD and the police review committee, I just there was definitely like a lot of interest because that group also wants to do stakeholder outreach and like just trying to figure out, you know, how are we not asking too much of the same people or how are we also not co-opting this process to try to, you know, do some of that work, but make them complementary where it makes sense. Um, so I don't, I don't think we need, you know, we don't need to go into it because it's 702 tonight, but just, you know, in our heads as we're moving forward and we can try to get some clarity directly from them, that group. Um, but just, you know, I think thinking about how those, like where it makes sense to have, you know, a conversation that you could talk about issues, including, you know, po police and then, um, you know, what would be like you're going too far afield of, or like asking too much of, <laughs> of, of our consultants. This, this is a, you know, CJAC could, you know, run process. So I just want to get that like on a radar because we were sensitive to that in the other committee, um, but also wanting to take advantage of having this like community resource and experts that know what they're doing as that group also bumps into the same like lack of expertise and how to facilitate a really good process. So just, just flagging that for us to keep an eye on. And that's why they made the request to have Keisha come to the next meeting so we could get some sense of how far can we go? How many questions, you know, do you have say, okay, you can ask three questions and, and, and where are the boundaries yeah. going to be? So um, it'll be very helpful to have her there. And um, there were a couple of other questions that I think I, um, that I, I can't remember all that I put into that that inquiry with, with you, but it's good to know that she's willing to come. Yeah, she was like, do you, I don't want to make a practice out of this. I'm not going to say yes to every group that right. wants to right, meet right. with us, but she's like, but I can meet with this group for 20 minutes on this date, so I'll go. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Perfect. Um, so real quick before we leave, I just want to run through um, uh, next meeting is January 7th, the Thursday, 530. Good. And then I picked up from this conversation next agenda items, which included, um, you know, checking in about other committees, making sure we're not overtaxing, you know, not only consultants, but also our residents, maybe talk about that. Um, talking about the what Elizabeth brought to the table today in COVID language, um, maybe talking about some of that, checking in on fundraising updates, and then diving into more of our community our the creative discourse work does that sound good did i miss anything we might have we might not have survey work to do right then and there yet well never mind just had to say okay. that out loud apologies okay thank you all Thank you. Thank you. Happy Thanks. Thanks. Good to see so, you all. Have a Cam good holiday. Cam Happy holidays. Cameron, when you um, when you uh, set the time for the police review, could you include Keisha so she gets the link? Um, when is that meeting? Oh, wait. January 11th, like 4.30 yeah. to 6.30-ish. Yeah, I can forward that to her. Um, in the future, your um, well, and Mary sets it. Is, is yeah, it, but, yeah. But I, I just sent it to Keisha. We're good to go. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Bye. 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 Take care, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. Happy New Year. <laughs> it's gotta be better. It. It's gotta be better. I know. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Twenty twenty one.